Hey friends, it's Mel, and welcome to my kitchen, and welcome to another weekly What's for Dinner. This one's going to be a little bit different. I appreciate all of your well wishes. Some of you heard we had a little virus run through the house here at the first of the week, so my meal plan was just completely off the rails. This is a week where I just didn't cook a lot at the first of the week. Towards the end of the week, we started eating again, but I just made what I thought our bellies could handle. (laughs) But it all turned out great. So tonight, sit back, relax, grab a glass of sweet tea, and let me do the cooking. This week's What's for Dinner is extra special. It's a collab with my friend Tiffany from Small Town 6. I'll be sure to leave her video and channel linked below in the comments. You're going to love Tiffany. She does what's for dinner videos, grocery hauls, some cleaning and decluttering, and some reviews. Be sure and go over and watch her video when you're done here. Let her know that Mel sent you. And if you're here from Tiffany's, I thank you so much for joining tonight. I hope that you'll just feel very welcome and at home here. Be sure to say hey in the comments and introduce yourself. First meal of the week is going to be some good old potato soup. I'm not talking about loaded potato soup or any of that stuff. I'm talking about potato soup like your granny used to make. This morning I was sick when I got up. And the more the day went on, I felt a little bit better, and I thought, I think that potato soup would be good. So I just peeled up some little yellow potatoes that I had and washed them up. This one, I'll do my best to give you some measurements on it, but I will link a pin below that is a good old-fashioned potato soup recipe as well. So I'm just chopping up my potatoes, trying to keep my pieces all about the same size. About halfway through, my daughter came through and said, hey mom, can I chop potatoes? And I said, yes, by all means, chop potatoes. I was not still 100% here. <laughs> so she finished them off for me, and I was showing her how my mama used to make potatoes for. We did crock pot potato soups with all the cream cheese and the bacon and the sour cream and all that stuff. I mean, that's good too, don't get me wrong, but sometimes you just want the old fashioned stuff. And of course, if you're having potato soup, you gotta have some cornbread. So here, Maddie is working on the cornbread for me. And we just use the recipe that's on the back of the cornmeal mix for the southern cornbread. The only thing we do a little bit different is throw maybe a third of a cup or so of flour in. She doesn't like to handle the hot cast iron, so I had to take over there towards the end of it for her. And I do always melt some shortening in my cast iron before I pour my cornbread in. So here I am just covering my potatoes with water. This was probably about six cups of water. I had some frozen diced onions in the freezer so I threw some of those in and salt and pepper 
That did not look like enough onions to me, so I had Maddie run out to the deep freezer and grab me another bag of those so I could add some more in. I threw in just a couple little teaspoons full of some chicken bouillon base. That does give it a nice rich flavor. And I threw in a couple of pats of butter. This was probably a third of a stick. Then all you're going to do is just bring that up to a bowl. Just stirring it every now and again to make sure it doesn't stick. And I added in just some regular whole milk. I usually use evaporated milk, but I did not have any. So I just used what I had on hand. And this is probably two cups of milk. And then you're going to bring it back up to a simmer and just cover it and let it cook until your potatoes get fork tender or however you like them. I do like my potato soup to get just a little bit thick so I'm going to make a slurry just out of some warm water and flour. And I still have it up at a pretty good boil when I pour that in so you're just going to keep stirring that constantly and it's okay with me if I have a little bit of lumps or dumplings in there it comes to fruition out of that that doesn't bother me at all This was how my mom, I remember her first making potato soup. As years went on, I remember her sometimes throwing in like a can of cream of broccoli or cream of celery soup into this. And then even throwing in some frozen broccoli and carrots and that just give it extra something. I love my mom's potato soup. And this hit the spot. It tastes really good that night. Um, at this point, I was the only one that had been sick and thought I was better, but come to find out I wasn't, and then the rest of them joined me for a little while. Anyway, we all enjoyed this soup this night, and it was warm, it was comforting, it has a wonderful flavor, but it's not so overpowering and rich like the loaded soups are. There's just nothing better than a bowl of just plain old creamy potato soup and a piece of cornbread. And the next night, you can see I had my lunch packed. I had all intentions of going back to work. I had me a bowl of soup and cornbread. I thought that would make a good lunch. It was not to be, but I did eat that on Tuesday night for dinner. I was not feeling a bit better on Tuesday, but made some more tea that always makes me feel better but the rest of my family I had them go out and get some Culver's so I'll show you my husband's he gets this whitefish at Culver's that is so delicious and they have wonderful slaw and tartar sauce and then my daughter got chicken tenders and fries and I think my oldest had went out to eat with a friend or something that night but anyway, they enjoyed this, and I just had a bite of potato soup, and all was well. The next day, I was feeling much better. I decided to make these million-dollar chicken roll-ups, and this is all you need. I had some shredded chicken that I had cooked up and froze earlier. Just pulled that out, and I had all these other ingredients on hand, so I could just put these together. And this was really good I had never made this before and I was just looking for some things that you know were things I had on hand that would probably still set good on our stomachs and I will have the recipe linked below for you and I probably went just a little bit smaller than what the recipe called for I have about a cup and a half of shredded chicken and I used almost a third a cup of cottage cheese 
maybe two tablespoons of sour cream and then a couple tablespoons of some softened cream cheese as well. Then I'm going to throw in about a quarter of a teaspoon of garlic powder and about a quarter of a teaspoon of onion powder. And I did throw in some salt and pepper as well. And maybe not even a half a cup of shredded cheese. And you're just going to combine all that in your mixing bowl. This is going to be your filling for your roll-ups. This recipe called for you to use 12 crescent rolls. Well, they come 8 to a can. So, I just made 8 really big ones. <laughs> you're just going to unroll your crescent rolls and then you're going to Put the little chicken mixture that you made, a nice heaping spoonfuls of that, down at the larger end of your crescent. And then, like the name says, you're just going to roll them up. You're going to put them in a greased casserole dish. Just line them up nice and close together because you are going to top them with a little sauce. I do suggest whenever you have time cook you some chicken up ahead of time whether you just put it in the crock pot the oven boil it on top of the stove that is always good to have on hand and like I said I will make extra and just freeze whatever I don't use and then I can pull it out for things like this once you get all those rolled up you are going to put them in a 350 degree oven and bake them for 10 minutes and then you're going to take a can of cream of chicken soup and about a half a cup of milk and just stir that together to make a little sauce that's going to go over it Once they've cooked 10 minutes, you're going to pull them out of the oven and you see they're beginning to puff up and you're just going to drizzle your soup mixture over. I did not use all of the mixture since I didn't make the whole recipe and I just put it in a little Tupperware container and stuck it in the fridge and I knew I would find something to do with it and sure enough, I did this week going to put them back in the oven once you get them covered with your sauce bake them another 25 to 30 minutes and out they come I did broil mine just a couple of minutes right on the end to give them a little extra brown top and these were so good this was a wonderful flavor it was very moist and juicy and it was a great flavor but again it wasn't overpowering and I just cooked up some green beans with this and some instant mashed potatoes this was just what I needed to get my strength back this week you could do a lot of different things with these crescent rolls I have enjoyed lots of new recipes this year with crescent rolls but this was just enough for the four of us tonight. The next night, I'm going to make a cowboy casserole. And this again is simple ingredients that you would have on hand. You're going to start with a pound of ground beef. Going to brown it up and drain off the grease. Once you get your grease drained, you're going to put your meat back in the skillet. And then it calls for two-thirds cup of cream of 
chicken or maybe it was cream and mushroom but you can use whatever I just used what I had left over from the other night you're going to throw in um, about a half a cup of shredded cheese a fourth a cup of sour cream going to throw in a teaspoon of onion powder and I did do a little salt and pepper on here too now this also called for corn which I did not put in I've about corned us to death over here it also called for some bacon pieces but I just didn't really want that in it either now it called also for about a third a cup of milk but I waited until I got my mixture combined in a little bit and I just kind of eyeballed the milk because this recipe actually called for just a half a pound of ground beef. I just didn't feel like that was enough. So I used a whole pound of ground beef and I think it turned out perfectly. I just got it mixed together where it was good and spreadable. Again, I will leave you a link to this recipe in the description box below. This was the first time I have tried one of these casseroles that has the tater tots. You take a 9 by 13 pan, spray it, and you're going to lay down that meat mixture that you just combined. See, that just covers the bottom of a 9 by 13. I just don't think a half a pound of meat would have been enough. Then you're going to take about another half a cup of shredded cheese and make a layer of that. Then you're going to pour on your tater tots. Once you get them arranged in pretty much a single layer, you're going to put it in a 375 degree oven for about 40 to 45 minutes. Then you'll pull it out and just put a little bit more cheese over the top. I guess you don't have to do this, but I thought it sounded like a good idea. So I just put just a little bit more shredded cheese over the top and then put it in another five minutes, just long enough to melt the cheese. And I wanted to show you this little salad spinner. I showed this in my Aldi prepper haul. I found this little salad spinner there and it was like $7.99 or $8.99. And I tell you guys, I am just enjoying the hound out of this little salad spinner. I love it. it. I always had a hard time. I would just strain and strain and try to dry off my lettuce. And you just can't ever get it dry enough. This thing does the trick. I spin everything in it. After I chop my broccoli and wash it, I'll spin it in there too. And it's just perfect because it's not huge. This was called a cowboy casserole. I don't know if I told you the name of it yet. And it was from a site called Dinner Then Dessert. She has lots of tater tot casseroles. This was so yummy. This was a stick to your rib. Just, oh, it was a good meal. I was missing my salads. I love to have a big salad every week made up that we can just pull out of anytime. That makes a great side. You can see the steam coming off of that. Chopped up a little green onion and this was so yummy. It had the best flavor. I love the tater tot casserole. This is another one that you could season your meat with taco and do all kinds of different flavors with it. Now by the end of the week, I was just trying to think of what can we have. 
Earlier that week, my youngest daughter said something about some quesadillas, and I did not have it in me right then. But I thought, I'm going to throw these couple little chicken breasts in the crock pot before I go to work. And you can see I was gone a little while longer. They got a little crusty on the top, but that's fine. I'll show you how to fix that. I just shredded them up with my little meat chopper when I got home. And I just added some garlic powder and some onion powder. I added a little salt and pepper as well and I took a couple of little tablespoons full of butter and I just mixed it in there then I got just a little bit of water and eyeballed it and I just poured that in and mixed it all around and it just moistened that chicken right back up Anytime you're unsure of what you want to have or you don't have a plan, like I said, shredded chicken or even to brown up ground beef to have in the freezer, you know, it's always a good idea. I threw these in that morning thinking, I think we'll do quesadillas, but if we don't, I'll have it. So I just put a little bit of butter into my skillet and I had a couple of these really big burrito sized tortillas that needed to be used up. So I just kind of make sure I got butter all over the back side of it and then I'm kind of going to work just in half of it and I'm just going to lay down some shredded cheese. Then we'll come in with some of that chicken that I've just seasoned up and moistened back up with some butter and some water and all those yummy seasonings. And you can see it just looks yummy now. Then I'm going to bring over some crumbled bacon. I like to buy this big bag of crumbled bacon pieces from Sam's. I just use this all the time. Then I'm just going to put just a little bit more cheese so that when I flip it, we'll get some nice melting on each side. We love a chicken bacon ranch quesadilla, but I don't like to put the ranch dressing on the quesadillas because some of us like it and some of us like sour cream, so we just dip in it. It. I just fold it over and get one side good and brown then I'll flip it over and brown the other side this dinner literally came together in no time it's always good to have simple things like this on hand that you can just pull out of your back pocket when you need to it was delicious Again, had a little bit of green onion cut up. We had some white queso and salsa and chips to go with this. This was just what we needed come into the week. This was wonderful. Guys, thanks so much for watching. I hope it has given you some ideas of some new or different recipes that you might try with your family. And I appreciate all the thoughts and prayers that you all put up for us this week. We're feeling so much better. And again, if you're here from Tiffany's, thank you so much for coming. Please introduce yourself in the comments. And if you're a regular viewer of mine, don't forget to go over and see Tiffany's video and tell her Mel sent you. I appreciate each and every one of you so much for watching and all the wonderful comments and conversations that we get to have in the comments. And guys, until I see you next week, I send you love from my kitchen.